Welcome in, everybody. This is Scout's Eye on College Football. SEC Football and Beyond is the name of this show as we break down the week three action in uh, the SEC. Kind of take you in the film room. How do the teams stack up at this point? We've got a lot to get to uh, what we're seeing inside the film room. I uh, want to remind you to subscribe, like, and share Off the Hook uh, YouTube channel, Off the Hook Sports YouTube channel. Off the Hook Sports YouTube channel. Surprise! Uh, uh, subscribe, like, and share. You can surprise us by subscribing, liking, and sharing. Also, if you do the same for the Landry Football Podcast Network, we'd appreciate it. If you're an SEC fan and you want to just get the SEC show, sign up for SEC Football and Beyond. And again, subscribe, like, and share. We really appreciate it. want to also remind you that we've got even more detailed film room breakdowns of this conference, every conference, as well as the NFL over at LandryFootball.com. So please check that out as well. Take advantage of the football season sale. Take advantage of, uh, well, just try it out for a month. You can take uh, try it for six months, whatever is your flavor. Look, here's what we do. Use my background, 40 years as an NFL scout now. Um, was a college coach, an NFL coach, college recruiting coordinator. So we provide coaching and scouting insights into – the college game, the pro game, from recruiting to the draft, evaluating the teams as college players and as teams, evaluate coaches. I do a lot of coaching search work. Currently, what I do as a consultant for NFL teams and college programs is uh, coaching search work, coaching evaluation work, player evaluation work on their teams, their opponents, as well as in the recruiting process and the draft process. So, uh, we got it covered for you, and we try to provide that coaching and scouting viewpoint over at LandryFootball.com so you can have a, a, your own scouting department, your own coaching department, and you are the owner for less than a magazine subscription. It can't do any better than that. Let's get to the action. Georgia absolutely smothered South Carolina. Look, I... Picking games is not what I do. We, we give you an evaluation. One of the great things about the gaming part of it is, you know, betting and, and fantasy football is to understand the game. And I think you can use that, but sometimes things happen um, and it's not reflective of the two teams on a given day. That's why they call it gambling. If it were, then all the football people would be just making, would be multi multi millionaires. If knowing football meant you got it right by the point spread or what have you, because things do happen. But we did talk about the fact that, we know Georgia's really good. I think everybody knows that. It's seen it. South Carolina, though, is the team that people have misevaluated. They're not good, um, and they're not that well coached. Um, and that's a bad combination. So there's no chance that they were going to be real competitive against Arkansas. I mean, the talent gap between South Carolina and Arkansas is narrower than South Carolina and Georgia. But, you know, Arkansas is well coached. I mean, that's a good staff, and South Carolina's got a very weak staff. Not very good. And, you know, this team is just not very good. And, yeah, they won a few games last year against some weak opponents. Credit them, because there were times where South Carolina was the weakest of opponents. I get it. They're better than awful, okay? They're better than the worst team in the East. I get that. They're just not good. And can they beat Vanderbilt? Yes. Can they play and beat Missouri? Yes. Can they play and beat Tennessee? No. Can they play and beat Kentucky? No. Can they play and beat Florida? No. Can they play and beat Ar uh, Georgia? No. Uh, can they line up in the West and beat most teams? Uh, no, 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 no. Just about anybody. There, there are, if you're looking at the weakest teams in the SEC, Auburn is struggling. So you put them in that mix right now. Uh, Missouri, Vanderbilt's not good. South Carolina's in that bottom four. Wherever you want to put them, three and four, I actually think Auburn would probably beat them. So I'd put South Carolina in the bottom three. But anyway, they didn't score into garbage time. They didn't even challenge. They didn't even compete. So what you're getting right now is a lot of feedback of, oh, you're, you're not competing. And uh, South Carolina's competing. They just, they're not good. They're not good and they're not well coached. So they can't craft a game plan that can give them maximum chances to be successful. 
just not a very good team. Um, Alabama blast you all Monroe. What can we say about that? Kentucky beat Youngstown State. Will Levis did a really good job. Arkansas avoided a disaster. Clearly, they weren't ready to play. Um, Bobby Petrino's Missouri State team was up by 10 points in the fourth quarter. And I'm watching that, and I'm like, wow. And I, I had a feeling that Arkansas would pull it out somehow, some way. It would have been really surprised if Missouri State had. But I got to tell you, in the fourth quarter, it was looking like, hmm, it may actually be what will happen. Tennessee uh, rolled past Akron as they should have. They're 3-0 and for the first time since 2016. Look, it took a mini collapse from South Florida late, but Florida survived a win 31-28. Uh, Anthony Richardson, um, you know, struggled again, you know, throwing the football, two interceptions in the win, 112 yards. Look, they've got to run the football, and they've got to have some success off play action. This is why Florida is not going to be really good this year because – defensively they can only play up to a certain point offensively they have no passing game Ole Miss got an outstanding freshman running back as well as two transfer guys they have allowed just 13 points through three games Ole Miss has defensively they haven't played good opponents I get it Georgia Tech's bad offensively this Ole Miss team is I'm really excited about that Kentucky game in a week they've got Tulsa this week more on that a little bit. A quarterback change was effective. And didn't we tell you over at LandryFootball.com that a and was going to re- respond and play better against Miami and, and likely win? A, Miami is not as good as people thought. Um, and, you know, the, look, the Miami got into the red zone four times. Th- they're not a really precise passing team. And so – They've played teams in which they were able to get a lot of points, and uh, and it didn't affect them. But against a pretty good uh, Texas A&M defense, four times in the red zone without a touchdown. That was the difference in the game. Um, A&M's got a pretty good defense. Miami's defense is, you know, not bad, but they're not special. And offensively, they're not special. A&M, don't get excited. No, A&M hadn't figured it out. They're not very good, and it's going to be a really tough game, a really tough matchup for them against Arkansas this week. LSU stormed back from a 13 nothing hole to beat Mississippi State. Um, Jaden Daniels, re- they did a great job uh, with Mike Denbrock, and in, in, um, uh, it, it did a really good job, of, I think, making adjustments in this game. Brian Kelly, obviously, a big part of that as well. They, uh, Nick Arnett, the defensive coordinator of state, did a, had a really good game plan coming in. They did a good job limiting Jaden Daniels' escape routes. Um, but LSU found a matchup they like in coverage with neighbors, and Mississippi State really didn't adjust to it. Vanderbilt, look, they got, they hit their over under win, three wins. They may not get another one the rest of the year. I don't know. We'll see. But beating Northern Illinois was a good one for them. The true freshman at Missouri, Luther Burden, returned to punt 78 yards. They controlled Abilene Christian. They still got a long ways to go. So let's take a look at kind of how things played out. I want, I want to go a little bit team by team. Vanderbilt, uh, again, um, it was 38-28. They started back up A.J. Swan at Vanderbilt. Uh, it paid off. I thought they moved the football really well. Uh, and I think by their standards – some improvements, looking forward to seeing what they can do. I, I know this week's going to be tough in Tuscaloosa. Um, South Carolina got all the attention again, all the home game. And look, I, I want, don't want people to understand. I don't want South Carolina fans to take offense. Nothing against any team or any coach. It's just when I look at it and see it, it's a little bit different from a coaching and scouting viewpoint, what you see versus what fans want to see. Fans and media look at the result. And then they determine, well, man, they won, they went to a bowl game last year. They're going to win. To, how many are they going to win? Eight or nine this year. South Carolina would be very fortunate to win six games this year. Very fortunate. I, I don't even know how they win six personally. But, you know, the, the schedule is weak enough to, to build in some wins. They're not very good. There's no rhythm on offense. They've got nothing on defense to stop good teams. So their only chance is to play weaker teams. I thought they were outplayed most of the game against Georgia State. Um, and, and I think that they're much better than Georgia State. So they're not very well coached. They're going to play short at this week. 
I think they take care of business. Um, they're not as good, so we'll, we'll see there. Uh, Missouri struggled on both sides of the ball against Kansas State a week ago. Uh, they, Brady Cook, um, you know, let's see if he can build off the, the win on Appalachian State. Um, they've got um, uh, Auburn this week. That's a, that's a matchup um, to watch because Auburn's dead man walking. Missouri losing to dead man walking uh, is going to lead to two and two, and I think further trouble. And, and I think you're going to start to see some real concerns, and people are starting to figure out Eli Drinkwitz. And I mean the fact that he's a good talker, but and I think he's recruited decently, but I, I just don't think that they're a very well coached team. Um, Auburn, what can you say? A disaster. They they another team that has no answer in the passing game. Um, they're going to struggle. Their defense is not going to hold up against good teams. They're not going to score enough points. Penn State is not an elite team. Penn State is not a playoff challenger. Penn State's not a challenger to win the Big Ten. Um, but they dominated Auburn. Okay. And, and t- it, Auburn couldn't find any momentum on either side of the ball. Um, they look, The two-quarterback system is there because they don't have – either one that's very good, and they've got to maybe rely on one that can be more of a factor in the run game. Mississippi State. Um, Again, I thought the the biggest mismatch was the job that defensive coordinator Matt House of LSU did against um, Mike Leach. He gave Will Rogers, Mike Leach, in that receiving core, a whole bunch of headaches. He gave them a lot of pre-snap looks, specifically what happened. Why did well, they dropped a bunch of balls? They weren't in rhythm. Why weren't they in rhythm? I'll tell you why they weren't in rhythm. Um, and drop balls or drop balls, you got to catch the football regardless of what you're seeing. But I'm going to explain what happened in the game and breaking down the tape. LSU was showing a lot of pre-snap looks and then backing out of it post-snap. So you were getting a lot of false reads. And so the receive in this offense, the receivers – have to make side adjustments. They have to read coverages and run their route based upon the coverage. Well, they were running, not they were running the wrong routes, not because it was called, you know, they're running a route that was called. You don't have called routes. The routes are based on coverages, and that's what they're taught. LSU knows that. LSU did a good job giving them false looks, and they were confused the higher game. So Will, Will, the whole game, Will Rogers was confused, was late on some throws. He made some good throws, and receivers dropped it because the ball was was coming a little bit quicker uh, than expected. They were seeing defenders fly in front of their face. They are used to great spacing. The receivers are at Mississippi State. They do a great job of creating that. LSU really viced down on them, and the receivers were looking ahead. They were a little bit nervous. They were – you know, they were, they were rubbernecking, as we like to call it, because those defenders were coming at them. That led to a lot of props. It was a is a coaching performance uh, that was the best one of the weekend in terms of strategic matchup, strategic advantages. Mississippi State, probably with a better team right now than LSU. LSU played with them, adjusted, and eventually put Mississippi State to bed. Um, Mississippi State with Leach consistently. Poor job of seeing things and adjusting to things. He does things his way, which is fine. That's why he wins to a point, but he doesn't win big. His only salvation, he's never been at a place that is expected to win big. So if he pulls an upset, oh, there you go. So when they beat an LSU, it is big. But when you've got the better team coming into the game and you get out coached, People don't really see that. Well, it's Mississippi State. It's it's at LSU. You're not supposed to win that. Well, I, I think I think there's a lot of reason to think that Mississippi State could have and should have won that game. They just were not well coached in that game, and LSU was uh, credit to that staff, who quite frankly didn't have a good game against Florida State. Uh, rebounded after a poor finish to the game against Kentucky. The Florida Gators were able to bounce back with a win. But Anthony Richardson hadn't played very well since the Utah game. They were able to run the football well. Utah didn't set the edge well. Kentucky did. South Florida uh, had some success limiting um, in the passing game. You, you, with the way you play Florida is you gang up against the run. 
and you make them beat you in the passing game and take your chances there. That's what Tennessee is going to do this week and force Florida to beat them with the passing game. LSU, um, as I said, great job by them. Jaden Daniels led the offense uh, in the comeback. Um, they got a New Mexico game, and then um, but, but they get into uh, conference play uh, in the week. They go to Auburn. That game is going to be uh, intriguing. LSU's in a little bit of a position to make a nice little run here uh, before they get uh, Tennessee at home on October 8th. Um, A&M, we said – they were able to figure some things out on offense to at least allow the defense a chance to have success, which they did not do against Appalachian State. It's a much-needed win. They got Arkansas this week. They don't match up very well. Arkansas looks like the better team. We'll see if the Aggies can mount a um, a, uh, a battle here. Ole Miss, they're trying to find their quarterback for the first two games. It's Jackson Dart. Uh, Jackson Dart played well in the route against Georgia Tech. Um, look, I think it's the Kentucky game in two weeks. They got Tulsa this week. That's going to see where these two teams are. Uh, Mark Stoops surpassed Bear Bryant's record for the most wins, uh, uh, at Kentucky and that win over Florida, get a victory, um, against Youngstown state. They got Northern Illinois this week to tune up, uh, for the Ole Miss game, Arkansas, uh, struggled to stop Missouri state's offense for the majority of the game. So that's the formula. Obviously, if you can throw the football, you can have success against this Arkansas defense. Um, I don't think AM could do it well enough. That's going to be a problem in this game. They would struggle more with a team like Tennessee than they would um, a, a team like Florida or a team like AM that can't throw the football. Tennessee dominated Akron, as we mentioned. They're trying to tune up a little bit uh, to get ready for Florida this week. We're going to break down that game in the later episode um, uh, when we kind of go through the, the game breakdowns. Uh, uh, you know, to me, it's about Tennessee's ability to stop Florida's run game. If they can do that um, and then get out to an early lead, they'll win and maybe win going away. Um, Alabama, Georgia, we talked about them. So, uh, look, I, if you're looking at the worst teams in the in the league, kind of going from top to bottom, I mean, Auburn looks bad, Missouri looks bad, South Carolina looks bad, and Vanderbilt looks bad. Take your pick. That's the weakest four. Um then I think you got Florida, you got Mississippi State, you got AM um, in that next category that uh, Florida and AM have got passing game issues. Mississippi State, I actually think, is better talent wise, but coaching certainly uh, is inconsistent there. I would put Ole Miss and LSU and uh, in Arkansas and Kentucky in that kind of that next group. I think Tennessee's maybe uh, in, a, in a little bit of the top of that group. We'll see. And then, of course, it's Georgia and Alabama at the top. Hey, a reminder to uh, sign up for uh, Off the Hook Sports YouTube channel. Make sure that you sign up, subscribe, then like it, and then share. If you like what this is all about, share it, if you would. Also, uh, if you sign up for the Landry Football Podcast Network, you get – all of the football content, college and NFL, that we provide for you over there. Um, so uh, if you would subscribe, like, and share that, that would mean a great deal to us. Spread the word about what we're doing. Get more detailed film room analysis of all the teams uh, around the country, uh, not just the SEC and uh, all of the, the NFL uh, over at LandryFootball.com. Take advantage of our football season sale today. Uh, also, uh, check out uh, – uh, what we got for six months option, if you want to uh, try it out for a month. Whatever is your pleasure, we got it for you, though. Check it out, and we'll talk to you next time. So long, everybody.